Welcome to Speak for Yourself. I'm Marcel Swally in the festive mood in Emmanuel Acho. My dog, it's good to see you, Sal. Great to see you, Emmanuel Acho. Told you I'm feeling festive. All right, let's get to our top story brought to you by Popeye's Mac and Cheese. Mac Jones tried a new and improved recipe today. And the Rams offense started off slow last night, but they picked it up in the second half. Matthew Stafford connected with Cooper Cup for two touchdowns, and the Rams took their division rivals, the Seahawks, and L.A. has now won three straight games and are tied with the Cardinals for first place in the NFC West, which makes us as our tour. Are you convinced the Rams are a Super Bowl team? Absolutely. Now, I was convinced of this prior to last night. You and I have had this dialogue yes. for a while now, but hopefully everyone else is convinced that the Rams are a Super Bowl team. We have to ask ourselves, what do you need to be a Super Bowl team? Let's what go. historically have you needed? <laughs> well, you need a Super Bowl <clears throat> caliber quarterback. Okay. Right? Whether it was Tom Brady, whether it was Nick Foles playing at a high level of Nick Foles, whether Russell Wilson, mm. Peyton Manning, mm. the quarterbacks over these last decades have been Super Bowl caliber quarterbacks of qua- or capable of playing at a Super Bowl level. Okay. Well, they have that check in Matthew Stafford. What else do you need? You need a Super Bowl head coach. Somebody who isn't just going to stick to <clears throat> what they've been doing all season, but is capable of changing some things around. Yeah. Being able to manipulate defenses. Mm. Clearly, you have that mm. in Sean McVay. Mm. You need an X factor. You X need factor? a Super Bowl X factor. Brother you X? Oh, so, <laughs> you need somebody who can just go make a play. Make Somebody happen. just go make a play. Okay. Last year, you know you had Gronk, A.B., Fournette, they had all the Bucks touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Somebody go make a play. Mm. Cooper Cup is that X factor. He now has, yeah, what, yeah. 90, uh, more than 90 catches on pace to have 147, set 148 catches. Yeah. Could set the record of most catches plus most receiving yards in a season. Records we did not know if and when they would ever be touched. <clears throat> they have an X factor player, but then they also have leadership. I think that's the component that you can't rate, you can't value, you don't know. I remember when Gronk, I think, came on the show last year and told us how Tom Brady was sending mass text messages the week of the Super Bowl, telling the guys, hey, we're going to get this done, we have to get this done. Do X, Y, and Z. Leadership, yeah. missing component. And the Rams have that. Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, mm. Matthew Stafford. They have the missing component. So I am convinced the Rams are a Super Bowl caliber team, but I was convinced of that before <coughs> last night. Mm, 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 mm. We're about to argue up in here. And we're going to have us a cordial argument. We're going to do this respectfully as a distinguished gentleman we are. But we can get into some gangster if you want to as well. Depends on how much you want to debate this. They're not a Super Bowl team. How can you be convinced they're a Super Bowl team? I wouldn't even convince halfway through that game that they were going to beat the last place Seattle Seahawks. A losing team. Wasn't convinced that they're going to win this division after that game. I'm not convinced of that. They're not leading the division right now. Arizona has the tiebreaker. And you remember the first time they faced Arizona? Oh, my God. That was a beatdown. I'm not even convinced they're the second-best team in their division because the San Francisco 49ers are in their division, and they played the 49ers, and the 49ers beat them down as well by 21. Where I'm from, that means give up the joystick, homie. So, Hold on. Are they even the third best team in the division? Yeah, yeah, you beat the Seattle Seahawks. Barely. Second half had to turn it on. First half, obviously, we mentioned how slow they started. I'm not convinced of this team. I'm not convinced that this team could go beat Green Bay in Green Bay because they're going to have to play in Green Bay. And Green Bay played them in Green Bay, and how did that turn out? How are they going to go all the way and they can't go anywhere. They're not even convinced of themselves that they're the best team in their division or second best team in the division. Could be the third best team in your division. You talking about Super Bowl championship? I don't know where they do that at. But Marcellus, come on, man, all that conjecture. You know you convinced. Are you convinced about a team that's three and four versus winning teams this season? Losing record against the good teams. Are you convinced with a team that has a tremendous quarterback but no running game to speak of, big dog. 24th in rushing offense. Last time I checked in the playoffs, you better run that football, especially in the inclement weather. Rams have won one rushing touchdown in their last six games. Come on, man. I don't see it right now with this team. I didn't see it last night going against the last place Seahawks, and I certainly don't see it going forward. Let me give it to you a different way. Let's um, go, let's this, go, should, let's go. this should end the conversation four minutes into the show. Um, <laughs> the reason I am certain – that the Rams are a Super Bowl team. Because come the playoffs, come anything of high intensity, it's not just how good are you at your best. Mm. 
But how bad are you at your worst? I'm the you might have a bad day in the playoffs. We saw Drew Brees in the Saints, bad day in the playoffs last year. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, bad day in the playoffs last year. You might have a bad day in the playoffs. So how bad are you at your worst? Mm. The Buccaneers at their worst have lost to the Saints and have lost to Washington, non-playoff teams. The Packers at their worst have lost to the Vikings, also lost to the Saints. Yeah. Not a playoff team in there. The Cowboys at their worst have lost to the Broncos. Also lost to the Raiders. Mm -hmm. Not a playoff team I can find in there. The Cardinals, at their worst, have lost to the Lions. Not a playoff team there. But the Rams, at their worst, lost to the Cardinals. They're in the playoffs. Lost to the Packers. Surely in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Lost to the Niners. Second hottest team in the (coughs) NFC. They're in the playoffs. Lost to the Titans. Absolutely in the playoffs. So the Rams, I am certain, Mm -hmm. are a Super Bowl team. Because it's not just how good are you when you're at your best, you but that. how bad are you when you are at your worst? Mm-hmm. Every other team in the NFC that is a top five football team, their lows are lower than the Rams. I don't just want to see uh, sell the gauge of, yeah, but when they play their best, they can't be touched. Yeah, Because you might come into a game when you don't play your best. So can you still win when you play your worst? Mm. Buffalo Bills. They got a loss this year to the Jags. Yeah. We've seen them. like we, we, We've seen uh, the Baltimore Ravens. They got blown out Mm -hmm. by the Bengals. Now, the Bengals are a good team, but they got blown out by the Bengals. We've seen teams lose games, which tells me their floor is too low. We'll go track and field Hmm. because we have to. We got to. It's not just Usain Bolt capable of running a 9.57, 9.58. Correct me, big dog. 9.58. 9.58. It's not just that Usain Bolt, the fastest person in the history of the sport, running a 9.58. That was Usain Bolt at his best. Yeah. But what Marcellus and I knew every time we sat down to watch Usain Bolt run was even at his worst. He ain't running slower than 10 seconds, more likely than not. Nah, nah, he ain't going to do that. No no DK Metcalf. (laughs) Even at his worst, we know what it is. So more likely than not, he'll still win a race if it has a bad race. Mm. When I look at this Rams team, Sal, I'm certain they're a Super Bowl team because even at their worst, they still going to get a dub. Mm. Unlike the Seahawks last year in the playoffs. Unlike the Saints last year in the playoffs. Oh, that was that's a comeback. And don't call it a comeback because you've been here about a year. (laughs) (laughs) You've been about a year. (laughs) I love you, Acho, because boy, you play with these words. Like you say that the Rams will play up to their competition. No, 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 no. It's not just about that sale. It's about that they don't play down to the competition. Okay, well, in the playoffs, that's not what's asked. That's not what's required. The medicine they give you in the playoffs is, can you play up? And you look at the ups, that's when you start to see the issues. When you look at the downs, you start to say, oh, I got confidence in this team. So they got high lows. I respect that, but that ain't the playoffs. The playoffs is like, what's your peak performance? What are you going to do when you go against the ultimate in competition? Same argument we had yesterday in terms of gas and brakes. So I'm with you. The Rams have good brakes. I mean, we ain't going to run into everything. We face a good team. Hey, we may lose to them. We face a bad team, we're going to beat them. Good breaks. Where's the gas? Mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford is tremendous. Got an arm cannon. We respect Matthew Stafford. They don't have balance, bro. That's true. And, you know, I don't know. Riding a bike, I don't know. Just walking around. (laughs) You got to have balance. Like, you you ever try to put on your pants (laughs) one leg at a time without holding on to the sink? (laughs) Balance is pretty important in this world. You can trip, fall, hit your head on the sink if you don't have balance. I'm looking at this team in the playoffs. They may trip, fall, bump their head on the Green Bay Packers, bump their heads against the Arizona Cardinals, whoever's in front of them. Because whoever's in front of them is going to be a good team who's going to ask, where's your gas? Who's going to ask, can you play up to our level of competition? I'm not so certain of that. When I look at last year, I look at a team in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is interesting. They have the same formula you were talking about in terms of their wins and losses. Oh, and then you look at it like the Chicago Bears. Even though that was a playoff team, you're like, eh, that's not really a team that you're going to see forward. Who's in front of you that you are going to be able to beat? And I don't have conviction on the Rams. Who's in front of them? Let's name the teams. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, you beat them earlier. Mm -hmm. Except that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team right now that is looking different, one, four, five, versus the team you beat. And then after that win, you lost and got beat down by the Arizona Cardinals. Tampa Bay, when it matters most, is not Tampa Bay that loses in the regular season. That's, that's, Ask the Chicago Bears. Ask the New Orleans Saints. Ask, et cetera, you know. <sighs> Green Bay? Like, where are they going to get their confidence, their conviction, so they could get their win? I'll give you the conviction. Um, can we have a little fun? 
Can we have a little fun? It, uh, another game show? No game like show. It, 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 uh, it's just me and my dog being real up here. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. Sometimes he takes me off the rails, but this time I'm going to do it to you. Oh. Um, so I don't spend much time on the Explore page. Explore on Instagram. Oh. Instagram Explore page. What is that for? It ain't nothing Searching? The devil. It ain't, yeah, you know when it just oh. auto-populates. Oh. You know, it'll just auto-populate. I don't spend much time on the Explore yeah. page. It ain't I, nothing but the devil and distractions. Right, right, right. But what I, what I have noticed in my past yeah, years, spending time on the Explore page is... Everything you get distracted by ultimately looks alike. The feature might change a little bit here. You got to type, huh? It might change a little bit there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But all the distractions on the Explore page, you find out they really look just about the same. Then you catch yourself like, wait, I done seen the same thing 10 different times with minor tweaks. Mm. Five, 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 six, five, seven, five, eight. But minor tweaks. (laughs) All of these NFC teams are the exact same team with minor tweaks. They're all the NFC East, the NFC West, the <coughs> NFC North, the NFC South. It's mm. simply an NFC Explorer page. Mm. And as I look at the NFC, I end up seeing like, wait, I'm looking at the same thing because Stafford, Brady, Dak, Kyler, Rogers. Oh, we doing that? All MVP caliber quarterbacks. Okay. Okay. Bonafide number one receivers, Hopkins, Evans, Cup, Amari, and or CD, CD Adams. Oh, okay. We doing that? All big time defensive stars, Donald, Parsons, oh, Jordan Hicks ball and Buda Baker. Oh, Russell Douglas some pick sixes. I, I end up realizing, just like I realize when I'm on the explore page for an extended period of time. I'm a change man. I'm about to say, uh, I'm about to say you thought you wasn't on it. Which it, one is it? End up looking at the same thing yeah. over and over with slightly mm. different tweaks. Mm. What that tells me is mm. this Rams team is a Super Bowl team because they look just mm. like the other Super Bowl teams. Mm. Yeah, one quarterback might be 6'2 instead of 6'3. Mm. One wide receiver might be light skinned, Cooper Cup instead of dark skinned, Devontae Adams. Wow, but at the end of the day, <laughs> we look at that, the same picture. And I know one picture is a Super Bowl team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm. Mm. I know one picture is a, is a NFC Championship team, Green Bay Packers. So if the picture is the same, okay. if I'm caught staring at the picture and I want to double tap it, then the Rams are a Super Bowl team too, big dog. Damn, boy, you got me just pinned against the wall. Happily married man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On the wake of the news of Megan Good divorce. You got me out here trying to talk about my marriage. I have never been on the Explorer page. That's why I act so dumb when you said it. Did that work, honey? Did that work? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never lying. You be looking like, matter of fact, I, I want to see your phone off mic. I want to see. I can guarantee you can see what somebody doing. I did that to my daughter one time. I was like, let me see what my daughter really into. It wasn't flattering. It didn't make me feel good. But, you know, she's young. I get it. Here we go. Acho, great comeback. However, I got to push back. Um, tacos, my favorite food. Mm-hmm. They bang. You can say, oh, you really eat tacos? It's all going to be the same. Nah, not necessarily. Let's talk about tacos with mild salsa. Medium, hot, or more importantly, the best of all, ketchup. Ooh, tacos look different. Then you could go to my mama house. Good luck. You better get a napkin right here on the floor right here because it's going to be orange grease hitting it to the elbow growing up. Then you go to my homegirl's Alexis house. Oh, she integrates that, that cheese and that meat all oh, better than you can at the border. You're just like, damn, they just go together. All right. Then you go to my wife right now. Okay. After you eat that, you want to go out to eat? <laughs> Here's the thing. It could be the same thing, but it could be way different. People throw up when I tell them I eat tacos with ketchup. People going to throw up, too, when you hear about this Rams rushing attack. People going to throw up, too, when you see their scoring defense. 11. People are like, oh, that, <clears throat> not top 10, but right there. However, last eight Super Bowl champions, all top eight or better. Disqualifier of late. Let's talk about it. Third down. What y'all doing on defense? Y'all getting off the field? Aaron Donald there. Jalen Ramsey there. Oh, my God. We got Bob Miller. No, y'all ain't getting off the field still. I'm 22nd. You know that uh, the last five champs all ranked higher than that top five, top half of the league? What you going to do? There are things that actually just stand out about this team that say, nah, that ain't it. All I'm saying is, can you talk to me about that? Now, we can get into the Explorer page all you want, because my Explorer page, boy, I ain't got no type. <laughs> that thing is wide and very. <laughs> I, I look at a lot of cooking shows. I look at a lot of uh, Internet Explorer pages. But at the same time, I, Heller's in my ear. I can't say what he just said. Point being, Acho, please talk about what the Rams don't do well 
and how that's going to come back to haunt. So Damn. what the Rams don't do well to me is handle physicality. That's the only thing the Rams do not do well. Oh, they get punked? Yes, they, they get, get punked smacked. And they get punched in the face. But here's what? why it's irrelevant. What? There's only one team in the NFC that's going to make the playoffs as a physical football team. In a division. San Francisco 49ers. You're exactly right. Yes. In a division. That's a the problem. San Francisco 49ers. It's a huge problem. Let's okay. not get it twisted. Let's go. Huge problem. The teams that the uh, Rams have gotten embarrassed by, to some degree, physical teams. You and I, I think we're both. I was at the Titans game. I don't remember if that's the one I saw you at. Rams played the Titans. Get in. Embarrassed. Mm-hmm. It was bad. Mm-hmm. Rams get embarrassed mm-hmm. by the 49ers. It was bad. Mm-hmm. The Niners and the Titans, both incredibly physical. What about but Green all Bay? the physical teams lie in the AFC outside of the 49ers. What about Green Bay? Green Bay's not physical to me. They have a physical element in A.J. Dillon, a huge physical and element. And Mercedes Lewis and the jumbo package that they love to run. They have a physical element, but they don't lean into their physicality. No, they don't. For example, they don't lean Green Bay, it. and we'll get into this more later in the show, but Green Bay, they're 18th in passing attempts. The 49ers are 28th in passing attempts. Gotcha. 49ers don't even try. To pass. Like, we like, no, we're just going to punch you in the face and keep punching you. Mm-hmm. My only fear for the Rams is they do not handle physical football well. But the Cowboys, going to light it up. Bucks mm. light it up through the air. Mm. Packers come to playoffs, light it up through the air. So the only concern I have for the Rams is if you see the 49ers. But if you can dodge them, you will be okay. I think if anybody sees the 49ers, they in trouble. But we're going to talk more of that later. Okay. All I'm going to say to your point is all the teams to me look beatable. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to give you confidence. I don't know if it's going to give you conviction for your team because you still got to go out there and beat them. The thing is the Rams can't run the ball. But they can stop the run. But at the same time, can you get off the field? And without that balance, I think that's going to be something that's going to come back to haunt them. A team that goes into inclement weather, a team that goes into the playoffs, and you say led by a Super Bowl appearing coach, right? Who even admitted after that game, I was out coach. Who saw his team only put up, what, three points in that same Super Bowl. So where's his conviction in terms of really doing it when it matters most? I just see too many holes, too many leaks on this water hose, too many gray patches. But we'll see who gets sprayed. See too much on that explore page. Boy, you ain't never like, boy, ain't nothing but curly hair. Coming up, we have more on the NFC West. I tell you, if the Niners have put (laughs) the conference on notice, like, just do the new odds for one there. But first, the Eagles' playoff hopes are still alive after last night's win. Play of Jalen Hurts and proven he's the future in Philly. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Now let me see your page. Don't delete. Don't delete. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> let me see. Oh, damn well. Let's head to Philly. Jalen Hurts had three total touchdowns and threw for just under 300 yards last night. He also set a new franchise record for the most single season rush touchdowns by a quarterback. Passing our own Michael Vick, the living legend. The Eagles beat Washington and have now won four out of five games. Stay in the playoff mix in the NFC. So, Acho, has Jalen Hurts proven he's the future in Philly? Yeah, big dog. No doubt about it. He absolutely has. But I think the greater question, Sal, that I've had to ask myself, yeah. it depends on what kind of future do the Eagles want to have. I'm excited to talk to you, the audience, but more importantly, you, Marcellus Wiley, about this one. Oh. Jalen Hurts has definitely proven he's the future, but what I know is this much. The best quarterbacks in the divisions win the divisions, thus win Super Bowl games because they get to the Super Bowl. So now you look at the NFC, right? Let's just let's go through this collectively. Mm. When I talk about the NFC, best quarterback in the NFC North, it's Aaron Rodgers. Well, Packers winning the division. Best quarterback in the NFC South. Let's jump to the Bucks. Tom Brady, obviously. Well, Bucks winning the division. It gets a little murky here with the NFC West. Is it Matthew Stafford? Is it Kyler Murray? Remember, Russell Wilson hurt due to injury. Well, they're both 10 and 4. Currently, the Cardinals are winning that division. Dak Prescott, clearly the best quarterback in the NFC East. Cowboys winning the division. Let's look at the AFC. Best quarterbacks in the AFC by conference. Okay. Uh, and AFC South, Ryan Tannehill, Titans winning the division. We off over here, AFC West, Chiefs winning the division with Patrick Mahomes. It gets a little murky again in the North between Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. Again, both teams are eight and six. The only statistical deviation is where Matt Jones and the Patriots are winning the AFC East, while nobody would dispute that Josh Allen is the best. So as I look at the eight divisions in football, seven of the eight divisions are being led by the best quarterbacks, or 87.5%. So what's that mean? (laughs) Jalen Hurts can be the future in Philly, but how great of a future do you want to have? Jalen Hurts quickly has to supplant Dak Prescott as the best quarterback in the NFC East. Otherwise, yeah, you can have a future, 
but it's all about the quality of your future. If you have the best quarterback in your division, you win the division. That's what the data, that's what stats show you. So how quickly can Jalen Hurts be the best quarterback in the division? Because that's the only real question that I care to ask. Can you have a future together? No question, but yeah. you can marry anybody. Yeah. Great. How long you want to stay married, Megan? Yeah. Oh, man, this is a tough one here. And you know me, I hate ripping my jeans being on the fence, but mm-hmm. damn it. Got to sometimes. Hey, man, you got a good cleaner. You got a good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I need to get these things sewn up. Oh, man, I'm so close to saying yes, but I'm going to stop short mm. of saying yes. And it's not because of Jalen Hurts. I'm going to be real. I just know how the game goes. Let's just talk about this and how the game is gone for Jalen Hurts. Looks are deceiving, especially when they're achieving. And these looks are deceiving to the Philadelphia Eagles because it looks like Jalen Hurts could be your franchise quarterback. And then if you look again, it also can look like he's not your franchise quarterback. But while he's achieving, it's kind of deceiving. You don't know what's going to happen. How's the game gone for Jalen Hurts in his career? Remember he got benched in the national championship game? Do you remember that? Yes, sir. You know why that happened? It's the same reason why Acho's still single, and it's the same reason why I went through countless engagements. It's because someone could be a paper champ. Someone could check all the boxes, but they don't like that flame. You ever been in that position where you're like, golly, why am I not taking the next step? And you know why? It's just because they don't ignite that flame. Something about Jalen Hurts doesn't ignite their flame. That was Carson Wentz. That's the one they were booed up with. Who didn't check all the boxes? Who would stay out late? Who would be putting his phone down when he was out to dinner? Boy, I tell you, you put your phone down around me, boy, we're going to have some problems. I already don't trust you. But Carson Wentz didn't check every single box. But they were in love with Carson Wentz. So all of a sudden, they realized maybe we have to get insurance. And that's who Jalen Hurts became. Forced into a situation because of insurance. That situation dissolves. All of a sudden, he becomes the primary reason, primary player for them as a franchise quarterback. You know what's wrong with that equation? What's wrong with that logic? Do you want to live your whole life just based off of insurance? No. You actually want something out there that you think is premium, top-notch, tier one in terms of performance and attributes. That's where Jalen Hurts, I think, in their perception, falls short. You know what's interesting about Jalen Hurts? Right now, he's not the best quarterback in their division, nor should he be. But there are some things that give you really great encouragement in terms of what he can become. Jalen Hurts starting off his career, 7-10. and 10. Not a winner, but same record as Aaron Rodgers. Better record than Peyton Manning. Different situations, obviously. Other great quarterbacks started off even worse. Steve Young, Troy Aikman, et cetera. So you look at it, you're like, damn, Jalen Hurts got something going on. It adds up for Jalen Hurts. But at the same time, you start looking at those individual attributes and you say, do I really want it to add up like that? This is a guy who's led by his rushing attack. This is a guy who's led by his rushing prowess. 24 total touchdowns, just nine interceptions this season. You got to put respect on that. That's more than Russell Wilson. (laughs) That's more than Matt Ryan, Derek Carr, Lamar Jackson, former MVP. But at the same time, they're not in love with Jalen Hurts. That's why going into this season, there was a competition for that job, even though Jalen Hurts didn't have any competition. That's why they also went and traded for a Gardner Minshew, even though they don't need a Gardner Minshew if they got their franchise quarterback. I just think that they're not in love with Jalen Hurts. I think that they're in like a lot with Jalen Hurts, mm-hmm. and that's going to come up short. And it may come up short, not a national championship game, because we don't have that at the pro level, but some critical time you can see they don't really love them. I am in like a lot with that take. So uh, one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing about this country, is that there's a middle class. Oh. Maybe my favorite thing about the country in which we live in is that there's a middle class. Nigeria, no middle class. Oh, You're either incredibly wealthy or you are incredibly poor. There is no in between. Mm. How does that relate to the NFL? Because in the NFL, there is no middle class quarterback. Mm. You are either good or you are bad in perception. Middle-class quarterbacks get replaced or are getting replaced. (laughs) There you go. Um, Jared Goff, middle-class quarterback, got replaced. Jimmy G, many deem him as a middle-class quarterback, supposed to get replaced. Tua Tungavailoa, many deem him as a middle-class quarterback, on the verge of getting replaced. Sam Darnold got replaced. Middle-class quarterbacks don't exist in the NFL. You either get replaced or are getting replaced. Mm. Jalen Hurts currently is a middle-class quarterback. So he very quickly 
needs to usher himself into the higher class quarterbacks. Mm. Because there is no middle class quarterback in the National Football League. You get replaced or you're getting replaced. Is Jalen Hurts the future in Philadelphia? Sure he is. But he has to quickly traverse into being an upper class quarterback because you can't stay in the middle class for long in the NFL. You got about a year, maybe two in the middle class. Mm. Young quarterbacks, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, they instantaneously ushered themselves into the upper class, into the high chambers, into the upper courts. Yeah. Then you got guys like Baker Mayfield, Tua, just kind of hovered around mediocrity. And in the NFL, if you are a mediocre quarterback, then we will put you Hmm. into the lower class situation of quarterbacks. Whether you deserve to be there or not, we will put you there Hmm. because there is no middle class quarterback in the National Football League. Jalen Hurts right now is a middle-class quarterback. Mm. To me, to Eagles fans, we're like, you know what? We can win with that. Well, well, sure, you can win with that. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you will do something. I look at Jalen Hurts and I'm like, yeah, we can win with Jalen Hurts as he stands right now. But just because you can win with Jalen Hurts doesn't mean you will win with Jalen Hurts. Once again, breaking this down with all the, the, the glitz and glamour, the best quarterbacks win the division. Whether it's Tom Brady, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, whether it's Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, they're tied. Whether it's Lamar Jackson when he was healthy and the Ravens were winning the division. The best quarterbacks win the division. Mm. So if Jalen Hurts was going to be worse than Dak Prescott throughout the entirety of their careers, we do not know, but you all judge. Y'all know football. If y'all don't think Jalen Hurts can be as good as Dak, then he shouldn't be the future in Philly. But if you think he can be better than Dak, then he absolutely should be the future in Philly. But there is no middle class. See... We're breaking it down now. We're going where it needs to go. I, I'm just saying what I know how he's going to be perceived and what his reception will be going forward if things don't drastically change. And things are positive right now. If you look at it in terms of some of his performances, 100-plus passer rating in three of his last five starts, four and two in his last six starts, Like there are things that you can just start to conjure up and say, you know what, this looks good. This is encouraging. But they're not in love with them. They're in like with them. And if you've ever been in like, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out why you're not in love. And that's where I think they're going to end up being in this respect. He has tier two tangibles, I think they feel. But tier one intangibles. Leader, works hard, go, a winner. Like everything about him is amazing. And then there's something that locked them into thinking there's a low ceiling for him. Let me tell you and personalize it. Coming out at Columbia, I, I haven't told this story too many times. I wasn't the best player on my team my senior year, which I tell people that and they just be like, hell no. You're a second rounder from Columbia and Ivy League. There's no way someone was better than you. Oh, there was. There was a middle linebacker by the name of Rory Wilfork, one of my best friends, who just knew the game. Could have went to big schools as well. He turned down some big schools, think Nebraska, stuff like that. He just went to Columbia, same as I. I recruited him, year younger than me. He was better than me, better. Here's where he lost. Perception measurables. He was 6'1", 6'2", 210, threw on some fake weight for the combine, tried to. You know how it goes. They're like, nah, nah, nah. We already know who you are. Meanwhile, who is that six foot four guy, 270, 280, that's running as fast as you? Me. Not doing a damn thing with it, but hey, I got the parts. I got the tangibles. And they locked me in to saying, that's a prospect. That's a project. We're going to take a risk and roll the dice on him. And it worked out. Mm-hmm. But they didn't do the same thing for him. Rory Wilford, who played the game better than me. Trust me, if he had made it to the NFL, he would have had a great career to do. Just knew the game. Just didn't look the part. I think in their perception, Jalen Hurts just didn't look the part. Whether it's tangibles, arm strength, doesn't have the cannon, but... Mobile, yes, but are we really going to lead our charge with you and your Russian attack or us and our Russian attack? When are you going to dice and slice it up from the pocket like we desire? I think he's just going to lose the perception game, not even the reality game. Let's go one step deeper. Perception is everything in yeah. life and in the National Football yeah, yeah, League. Yeah. Um, Taylor Heineke, if he was a number one overall pick, oh. we would know that Taylor Heineke is going to be Washington starter next year. Mm-hmm. If Taylor Heineke was Baker Mayfield, yes. he would be getting his fifth-year option picked up if he was in a fourth year, and he would be the bona fide starter. But because Taylor Heineke was an afterthought, Mm. then we're like, yeah, who's Washington's quarterback going to be next year? I'm Mm. sure they'll draft a guy. Mm. But Taylor Heineke has played just as good, if not better, than half the quarterbacks in the league this year. Yes, Let's get even deeper. Cooper Cup. Mm. There should be no dispute about Cooper Cup being the best (laughs) receiver in football right now. 
He is literally, as Marcellus has said and I have said, going to break records we thought would never be touched. Yeah. He might get 2,000 receiving yards. Megatron didn't get 2,000 receiving yards. Yeah. Cooper Cup might get 150 catches. Mm. Michael Thomas, NFL record setter, first round pick out of Ohio State, didn't get 150 catches. But Cooper Cup, we're still debating and disputing as he's the best receiver. You right? Well, give me DeAndre. Hopkins. Why? 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 Give me Devontae. Why? Hopkins. Why? Why? Por qué? Por qué? Stature. I think sizeism. I think colorism. I'll give you both. I think sizeism. If Cooper Cup was six five. 215. But instead, he's like 6'2, 194, and post pictures on Instagram with his dog, right? He's just like Cooper Cup. Um, and then I think colorism. We don't look at Cooper Cup and have that natural inclination of, oh, yeah, he's supposed to be a beast, big mm. dog. Like, he don't, he don't look like Julio. He don't look like Hot. <laughs> he don't look like, like, he doesn't look like beasts that have come before him. Mm. So we're just like, yeah, yeah, Cooper Cup. It's the same thing. Perception dictates everything. Mm. We already have this perception of Jalen Hurts as, man, he got beat out by two at Alabama. He's a running quarterback, got a ton of heart. Mm. He's a coach's son, but he doesn't really have a big arm. He's not a big arm guy. Great leader, though. So not only is Jalen Hurts fighting against being great, he's fighting against being great in perception. <clears throat> and that is two fights for the price of one. Man, talk about it. All right, let me button this up, man, because it's funny. Uh, Kurt Warner talks about this at length. What part? What part? Uh, about the perception of how he went from being, first of all, the grocery bagger mm -hmm. to a Super Bowl and MVP in the NFL to a backup to a rookie. And then all of a sudden, once again, finds himself in the Super Bowl in Arizona. And he said the biggest difference was this perception. He's like, I can still do the same things, but no one thinks I can do the same things. And that was the conversation. I remember the day where a Cooper Cup was the best receiver in the NFL. And it felt like everyone gave him his prop, Steve Largent, way back. And he had a Cooper Cup kind of product in terms of perception it's not colorism with cooper cup it's not sizeism it's speedism the dude ran a four six at the damn combine they were like i don't give a damn who you are what about because jerry rice thank man? you because jerry rice had the same issue people don't remember when john taylor now 49er fans are standing up on who you said john taylor people were questioning was jerry rice the best receiver on his team he just kept getting all the targets kept getting all the catches kept getting all the touchdowns but people were like yo if john taylor was getting that same amount of production, the same amount of opportunity, it'd be over. Well, John Taylor wasn't as good as Jerry Rice, but there was a conversation despite because Jerry Rice was 4-6. I think Cooper Cup falls into that boat, but I don't want to really beat that down. What I want to beat down is this perception that comes between potential and production. I was a player rep for nine out of ten years. So I learned the business of the game. I learned the economy of the game as well as just how we played the game. And it was interesting to see the marketing for the players. And I noticed there was a huge discrepancy and huge disparity between all of the middle class players and good players versus the ones at the top level and the bottom level. And it wasn't based on production and fully. I thought it was. You know what it was? It was potential or production. That's how you got paid. Case in point. I was there when Peyton Manning after his rookie year. Peyton Manning had volumes of marketing opportunities because he was the number one overall pick. He was a Manning and he was Peyton. Mm -hmm. And then there were guys who were perennial pro bowlers. Couple pages, couple pages of marketing opportunities. Peyton Manning had 50 pages. And then it was all of a sudden you get to the bona fides, the Dan Marinos, et cetera. And then they had 50 pages like Peyton. And I was like, what's this middle ground of guys who continuously be Excellent players, perennial pro bowlers, all pro, and they're not getting a shine. And they broke it down to us right in the podium. They said, oh, the league rewards potential and production. It's a sad say, state of reality, but the perception of Jalen Hurst's potential is too low for him, I think, to be the franchise quarterback. Coming up, did LeBron James ruin basketball when he went to Miami? That's a real question. We'll tell you if we agree with his former teammate. And that's next on Speak for Yourself. Christmas Day on Fox. Baker Mayfield and the Browns take on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Then catch Oak Cardinals on NFL Network. It's a Christmas Day doubleheader on Fox. NFL Network and streaming on Prime Video. Oh, oh, oh. And speaking of that, Christmas Day, Terry Bradshaw is giving away a house. Casa on the Fox Bet Super 6 app. Scan the QR code and enter your picks in a Christmas special contest. Then opt in to the house giveaway sweepstakes for your chance to win. 
one lucky winner will be announced on Christmas during the Browns Packers game on Fox. Don't miss out. It's free to play. Now let's head to the NBA, y'all. Where the Lakers dropped their third straight game in last night's loss to the Sun. LeBron James had a game high 34 points, but it was not nearly enough. Speaking of the King, he made waves with his decision back in 2010 to join the Miami Heat. His former teammate, Iman Shumpert, thinks that move to form a super team changed the course of the NBA. Take a listen. It wasn't KD. It was Braun first going to Miami. Braun knows he wrote basketball. Okay. He thought he was making it better. I get it. Me personally, I love the NBA for the loyalty that I thought was there. He basically knocked the fourth wall down. Mm, Nacho. Have an issue with Iman Shumpert saying LeBron ruined basketball? Absolutely, man. Ron, LeBron didn't ruin basketball. Our problem is we have revisionist history, and we also operate with hindsight bias. The mm. bias of realizing LeBron went to four straight championships with the Heat. The bias of realizing LeBron then became a back-to-back NBA MVP with the Miami Heat. But that's not the LeBron James that left. Let me remind everyone. Mm. The LeBron James that left did not run the NBA. That was Kobe Bryant. The late, great Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was the one who had went to three consecutive NBA finals. The LeBron James that left Cleveland was a six-time All-Star, but he'd only been to one NBA finals, and he got swept at that NBA finals. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, after LeBron left and had all the success, well, now it was dictated and defined as ruining basketball. But the LeBron <laughs> James that left was not the LeBron James that returned. Mm. We view the LeBron James that went to the Miami Heat as the four-time NBA champ LeBron James. Mm. We view the LeBron James that went to the Miami Heat as the nine-time NBA Finals appearing out of ten years LeBron James. Mm. That's not the LeBron that left. When LeBron James left, he was a budding megastar, but he wasn't a made man yet. He was in the process of being made. When LeBron James left, he had only been to the Finals once in his first several years in the NBA. So let's not act as though LeBron James ruined basketball because we didn't know what LeBron was going to do when he went to Miami. He knew what he was going to do, Uh but we didn't know what he was going to do. Basketball was ruined based upon Iman Shumpert in the aftermath of what LeBron James accomplished. But make no mistake, other people tried to accomplish the same thing. Let's talk. Kevin Garnett tried to accomplish the same thing. Remember, Kevin Garnett, a 10-time All-Star, went to Boston with... Ray Allen, who was a six-time All-Star at the time, and they joined forces. Their only problem was they only won one. Mm. One, one. It's not LeBron's fault they only won one. They only won one. Remember, Clyde Drexler went to Houston and joined the Rockets after the Rockets had already won one. Mm. They just didn't turn into a dynasty. Charles Barkley, oh, NBA MVP Charles Barkley, dog. also joined the Rockets who had Clyde Drexler and Akeem Olajuwon. Mm-hmm. They just got to the Western Conference Finals game, got bumped by the Jazz. Kevin Willis too. So do that. there was an attempt <laughs> mm. to form some sort of three-headed monster, some dynastic trio. Mm. They were just unsuccessful. Mm. The Celtics tried to form a dynastic trio. Mm. They were just unsuccessful. LeBron James just succeeded at doing what others tried to do. And because of his success, we now, with hindsight understanding, say LeBron ruined basketball. No, others tried to be good, tried to be great. LeBron was just, per per usual, greater. Mm. Tremendous take, tremendous take. Oh, Iman, man, Iman. He didn't ruin basketball, LeBron James. He reinvented basketball as we see it. That's who the king is, LeBron James. Let's talk about it because you gave me some layers to build on. Uh, I guess Shump must be wrapped up in watching Wifey dance and him dancing too. All this dancing. (laughs) Hey, hey, slow down and know the game and know what you're talking about on this one, Shump, because I'm going to help you out. And you know who helped me out? Lupe Fiasco. Long time ago, Lupe Fiasco had a song. You tell me the name of the song because he said, if you are what you say you are, a superstar, have no fear. Imagine you hit the high note. The camera's here. Hit the YMCA with the button down. Oh, damn, LeBron, why are you wearing that into the YMCA? Point is, lyric, 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 rhythm, 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 tempo, tempo. And then he says the most important part. We didn't even sing that part. We was like, man, nobody can sing like that. Did you improve on the design? Did you do something new? And yes, LeBron did. 
He improved on the design that others had tried, Mm -hmm. others had succeeded, but not to his degree. Did you do something new? Oh, yeah, he did something new, as you brought up. Let's talk about what he did that was new. We're not even going to talk about the economic impact. Good Lord. LeBron basically tanked Cleveland and their their financial district and all the bars and shops around there just because of his departure and then had a huge surge and bump in Miami's because of his arrival. We're not going to talk about that. That's easy. We're going to talk about how old heads <laughs> get mad at something new and then have that revisionist history. That's what's going on right here, because everyone always wants to talk about loyalty. It's like, oh, man, I like the game when everyone was loyal. All I ask is, when were they loyal? You mean when a GM told them to be here and they had to be here if they weren't at their second job? We always misconstrue what loyalty was back then. Loyalty, tell me if this is loyalty. When you look back in the 70s and you see teams that have a combined 27 all-NBA performance players on Elgin Baylor, Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, you talked about the the Rockets when they had Akeem and Barkley. How about when you look and you see Shaq and Peyton, Alonzo, Mourning, Dwayne Wade, Eddie Jones, like dope, stacked teams. Let's go back to the Lakers. Let's go back to the Celtics. I like loyalty. You mean you liked it when every year it was a baton and a coin flip between L.A., Boston, L.A., Boston. Now, if you really look at it, all these different franchises and different locations are plugged in to help us grow this game. LeBron James activated that. He showed everyone where the outlets were to plug in. Now, all of a sudden, we got champions from where? Milwaukee. Got champions from where? Toronto. Got champions from where? Los Angeles in the bubble year. Whatever it may be, it spreads around. It's no longer the coin flip, but just between two franchises. GMs tried this. GMs did this. LeBron just improved on that design. He did something new. And because he's a superstar with the emphasis on super, he did it better than they could. Mm, Absolutely right. Um, So let's go one step deeper. Um, LeBron James, many people, the pushback is, well, why didn't LeBron bring people to Cleveland? Right. Like, why did LeBron have to go? Mm. If LeBron could have recruited people to Cleveland, it would have been a little bit different than going to join forces with D. Wade, a D. Wade who had already won a chip with Shaq in Miami, et cetera. Gotcha. But LeBron James is a selfless individual that we know. The public perception of LeBron James, he's a pass first guy. I would also implore you all to consider this. Um, What is the most important relationship that someone has? Typically, the relationship with their significant other It's supposed Mm. to be the most important relationship. Yeah, yeah. Of all superstars in any sport, but we can focus on basketball, LeBron James is the one superstar who, in his most important relationship, Hmm. actually doesn't have any sort of blemish. Him, Savannah, they don't really have any blemishes, right? We've seen blemishes as recent as yesterday with our other basketball superstars. I ain't saying no names. Oh, now you're not saying that because you like him. Not because he follows me on Twitter and I ain't going to get cussed out. Who, Steph Curry follows you? Steph Curry follows you? Yeah, man, you know I be making some moves out here. So you take care of the people you like. Gotcha. (laughs) Great, Steph. Rule of thumb. Take care of the people you like. Um, So if we know that LeBron James is a selfless individual off the court, we know he's a selfless individual on the court, LeBron isn't going to sit there and make people come to Cleveland for the sake of winning. LeBron is just like, oh, I'm going to do what needs to be done to win. That's what he's always done. Yeah. Y'all need me to pass to win? Bet. Y'all need me to get buckets to win? Bet. You need me to do this to say in a, in a, in a, in a, a blemishless marriage? Bet. LeBron has always done that on and off the court. So I think the retort of, well, LeBron James could have had people come to him, it's also futile because that's just not who LeBron James is or what LeBron James does. He just does what others are trying to do better than they can do it, and I then know. we get mad when he does it better. Oh, man, use his success against him and then try to make him a prisoner of his own success and convict him of what crime? Doing better than you? <laughs> boy, I laugh, boy. I tell you, man, there's a couple of things that I've learned just over the years, like how fear of failure was such the talking point growing up. Then I learned that it's more about fear of success. Like, are you going to still continue to evolve and grow despite the perception that you're already good? I remember having to pierce through that. Like, yo, good ain't good enough. I could always do more. And now we're going to be mad at a kid who was named the king, whether he named himself or not. He was called the king. No blemishes. Comes into the league, destroys from hello, wrecks it, becomes the king for real. And he wanted to do it his way. 
He wanted to do it where it actually encouraged player empowerment. I don't get players because players, you know, sometimes I guess when we retire or we're done, we want to be purists. We forget how we really were in that locker room with a pulse. Now we want to be purists and look back at yesteryear and say, loyalty. That wasn't loyalty. You were stuck, fool. Mm -hmm. Like, and then we act like, oh, I wanted to be loyal. Loyal to what? Lakers had seven Hall of Famers playing for them in the 80s. Who cares how they got there? They were there. That, to me, looks like a stacked team, a super team. Celtics had nine Hall of Famers in the 80s. And all they were doing is like, who's going to win a championship this year? You or you, you or you, you or you. Now everybody getting into this. You see how the economy of the NBA grows because everyone else is plugged in and activated? We can't be that type of person. We got to look at it holistically. You got to look at it for what it is. I think Iman was a little off on this mm-hmm. one, Big Dog, saying LeBron ruined something. So it's, it's, it's led me also to this point. Let's go. People will hate you for doing what they want to do and having what they want to have. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Just by nature of doing what someone else wants to do, having what someone else wants to have, mm-hmm. by living out not only your dream, mm-hmm. but their dream, yeah. and the dream, you will incur unnecessary and unmerited Hatred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where Bron Bron is. Every year, general managers draft with the intention of drafting the best players. Yeah. With the intention of building a dynasty. That's the goal mm. for every team. Every year. Every year, players who think they're superstars, uh, Paul George, move to Ch- join Ch- with other players. You mentioned Paul George's name and not Steph. Oh, okay. Will move to join forces with other players with the intention of having a dynasty. In all seriousness, I said it as a joke, but let's be real. I felt you. The Clippers intended on having a, 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 a dynasty. Hey, correct? dog, not too many times on the same cheek. Did they? <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm not, you know better than me, but What'd like, you say? yeah, we got a dynasty. Like, they they got PG plus Kawhi, plus you got a veteran presence guy Ka- like. So, we, we got Ka- <laughs> We ain't got the no, why? We ain't you got Kawhi. You got the veteran presence like uh, 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 Ibaka. Yeah. Then you're like, yeah, let's see if we can add Rondo to the mix. Man, chill. Got, let's like, Thinking that you're going to form some sort of super team. The Clippers just swung and missed. Yes. Just like the Lakers presently are swinging and missing. Let's yes, not get yes, it twisted. Yes, yes. Every year, They're everybody better. trying to do it. LeBron just did it. And now we're going to hate on him for doing what everybody else is trying to do. Somebody got to make it make sense because I can't make it. Oh, I'll make it make sense. I'll make it make sense. Um, you started off by saying this, and let's, let's dive into that before we go. People don't hate you because of what you have, big dog. They really don't. I know it looks that way because you got it. And between you and them, all you see is the things you have, and they only see the things you have. So it seems like the hate is for the things you have. Talk to me. What they hate you for? They hate you because you did something they didn't do. Mm -hmm. You worked. They hate you because they know that the thing that they're guilty of is the thing that got you what's between y'all. Mm. So that's where the hate comes from. Just like anything, hit dogs holler. I don't hate you because you got stuff. Because look, I was broke as hell growing up with people broke as hell and they had Jordans. <laughs> they had gold chains. They was at the Slauson. They had on silk shirts. They had everything the rich people had. Gucci, Louis, real fake. I don't know. They don't hate you because of that. They don't hate you because of those possessions. They hate you because you got something and you keep showing them one thing that they ain't going to do and that they didn't do was just work for it. So nobody wants to hear that. Now, Clippers, get to work, damn it. So <laughs> we can hate on y'all. Coming up, watch out for the suddenly hot 49ers. Tell you if they put the NFC on notice. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Don't be mine. 49ers are suddenly hot, winning six of eight games. And they currently have a wild card spot in the NFC. Jimmy Garoppolo has been steady throwing 12 touchdown passes in that eight-game span. And general manager John Lynch said, quote, he's running our system exactly how we want. Right. So, Acho, have the 49ers put the NFC on no teeth? Absolutely. Now, let me make another guarantee. I believe I've guaranteed the Cowboys will not win a playoff game. You get, you're guaranteeing that right now? I, gar- I've gar- I have guaranteed that. You have, that. okay. I've guaranteed that the Chiefs will make it back to the Super Bowl. Let me make one more guarantee. The San Francisco, 49ers, San Francisco 49ers will win their first playoff game. Okay. Point blank okay. period. Okay. I just okay. I don't care where they wind up, who they play against, how they play there. They will win their first playoff game. Mm. I have more confidence in this Niners mm. team than every other NFC team. And I know the Packers are going to get a bye. So I'm <laughs> um, 
Niners put the NFC on notice. It's simple. This is my take. This could be it. I don't need to say much more than this. But the Niners do something that no other NFC team does. They can do something that no other NFC team does, and that is punch you smack in the middle of your eyes and make you feel it. The San Francisco 49ers are like, you know what? While everybody else is pretty, we're going to be nasty. Mm -hmm. While everybody else is uh, friendly, we're going to be grimy. Mm -hmm. And the Niners are like, that's just how we're going to get down and see if y'all can stop it. I've said this before. I'll bring it up in the full screen. Look at all the current NFC playoff teams and look at their number of pass attempts. Then look at the very bottom and look at the Niners. See, the Buccaneers are in the playoffs. We know that. They pass the ball the most amount of times in the league. Cowboys, fourth most. Vikings, they're in the playoffs, seventh seed, 13th most. Then you get to the Rams, we're in the teens, 14th most. Packers, 16th most. Then you get to your Cardinals, 19th most. Then way at the bottom, you see the Niners, 28th most. What's that mean? Hmm. What does that matter? Let's talk ball for a second. Let's talk it. Prepping for bowl games, Sal, my coaches would always come to me with jubilee when the bowl team we were facing was announced. And they would come to me with jubilee because it would be like, oh, thank God we don't have to play Georgia Tech. Thank God we don't have to play Army. Oh, thank goodness we do not have to play Navy. Y'all are probably wondering, okay, why those three teams? Joe Sal already knows. (laughs) Because they run the option. (laughs) And they run the triple option. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And you cannot prepare for that style of ball Mm. in one week or even three weeks. Mm. My coach, I vividly remember, came with a huge smile on his face because we were not playing Georgia Tech. And he was like, thank God we don't have to prepare for that. The San Francisco 49ers are like preparing for a triple option team. Because what you prepare for during the week of practice is, okay, they got Devontae Adams out there. But Devontae Adams is Cooper Cup. And Cooper Cup is DeAndre Hopkins. And DeAndre Hopkins is Amari Cooper. It's all the same thing to a defense. You have a play in cell, you might remember this. They'll be called one star. Mm. One star is cover one. And that star symbols, we're going to double team the other team's star player. Mm-hmm. You can run that exact same play versus the Cowboys. The star is just going to be Amari Cooper. Versus the Rams, the star is just going to be Cooper Cup. Uh, versus the Bucks, the star is just going to be Mike Evans. That one star carryover, you can run versus every NFC team that you play. Mm. Except the Niners. Mm. Run one star if you want to. They just going to hand the ball off. Yeah, yeah. That star that you're double teaming in Debo Samuel, he's just going to come around and take a jet sweep. Oh, that star that you're double teaming in Debo Samuel, he's going to be in the backfield this time. So all those repetitions mm. you have in April, May, June, during training camp of one star, all those repetitions you have in August of one star, all those repetitions you have from (laughs) uh, uh, week one to week 18 of one star are rendered useless. So all the residual practice reps that you can carry over from the Bucks to the Rams to the Packers to the Cardinals to the Cowboys are useless when you play the Niners. Mm. I just broke down the real deep details, intricacies of all of why it matters. But in actuality, Niners can just punch you in the mouth. They're going to win an NFC playoff game. They might mess around and win out in the rest of the regular season. I would not want to see them at all right now, Sal. Ooh, man, I agree with most of what you said. I'm going to push back on some of what you said. But let's talk in agreement first. Yes, everyone's on notice. One, not even because of the 49ers doing. Everyone's beatable. Everyone, including the one c Green Bay Packers. Every team, especially in this NFC, know that they're on notice because everyone's beatable. Let's start there. But they've won five of their last six, six of their last eight for a reason. We see them out there scoring points, too. 30 or more points in four of the last six games. So they tilting. Now, why are they tilting? You keep talking about this running game, running game, running game. I didn't hear Jimmy G's name anywhere in there. Let me tell you who Jimmy G is. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan knows. Oh, Kyle Shanahan right now out there buying two gifts, Christmas presents and what he going to give him in the offseason to stay, beg him to stay because Kyle Shanahan with Jimmy G is 30 and 13. That's almost 700 win percentage. Without Jimmy G, 7 and 28. Y'all say what y'all want about Jimmy G. He is the straw that makes this work. When you talk about, oh, well, the passing game, not as great as we desire, but the running game is there. Well, Jimmy G also has to give that defense, especially those safeties, enough fear where they just don't come down in the box against this running game. So a little golf claps for Jimmy G. Let's talk more about that winner and that Midas touch that Jimmy G has because now it's adding up for this team to have a simple formula. Run the damn ball and play defense, and that's what they could do. 
That is playoff football. I respect it. But let's talk about it for real. One, I'm scared. I don't know if this team can go far. I think this team can make impact. I think this team could, like you said, win the first game potentially. Depends on the matchup. But when you're averaging 25 points a game, 13th, not the end of the world, right? But there will be a moment potentially where they will call you to go to a shootout. Now, in that shootout, what are the 49ers going to do? Because you're going to abandon the running game if you're going to really participate in the shootout. Mm-hmm. You can't say, we're going to keep running the ball. We're down seven. Yeah, of course. We're down 14. Oh, damn. Down more than 14. Got to go out there and shoot it out. Are they equipped? You kept talking about who's not equipped to deal with this running game. Are they equipped to deal with someone else's passing game, especially if they're lighting up the scoreboard? Let me give it to you like this. One thing I know from the NFL experience that I could prepare for overnight was physicality. Why? Because I ain't no punk. Maybe last game, yeah, it was a finesse game. Maybe last game I went into it thinking they were a little softer. Maybe last game the game plan said we were on the edges more so than down the middle. But you ain't going to punk me with notice. (laughs) So I think teams are going to try and take that card away from you. Physicality. They're going to say, nah, what y'all going to do if we make you go plan B football? Not exactly run the ball down the middle. My last two points are of levity. One, I didn't have braces. You saw that video of me when I was like, hey, man, they just worked out. Heller. Second one is, why is the University of Texas playing Army in a bowl game? Are y'all that sorry? What happened to y'all? Woo! What was Columbia busy? What the, what's wrong with y'all? When you said that, the only thing I can think of, y'all sorry. What was our record? Six and five? Eight, eight and five that year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that part. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't like Who won that. the bowl game? We did. We won the Holiday Bowl. Mm. Uh, we beat Cal. Mm. Mm. Y'all should have took a holiday. Too, Y'all should have took a holiday. Not <laughs> playing that bowl. That's, that's kind of demeaning. All right, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, I, I think you make a good point in that, yeah, teams can, teams can mentally prepare to play the Niners. But here's a problem, and this is what I don't think fans realize, man. No, no, no diss to y'all at home. So many people just think we show up on Sundays oh, no. or they have some no. degree of no, no. surely they practice, but they don't know the nature at all of what an NFL mm. practice consists of. Blah, blah, blah. Realistically speaking, Tuesday, you're off. No. Mon- well, how'd y'all do it? COVID. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they played yesterday. Let me stop. I'm like, Tuesday, you're off. Yep, yep. Monday, you watch film. Wednesday and Thursday is your hard practice. Mm-hmm. Friday is a walkthrough, glorified walkthrough, how we yep. got down. Saturday, you rev it up a little bit, primarily a special teams day. Yeah, right? I'm about to say, Saturday, really a special mm-hmm. teams day. Chip mm-hmm. Kelly, boy, who's out there sprinting on Y'all Saturday. were revving it up on Saturday? No wonder y'all were sorry. We were <laughs> the hell wrong we with y'all? Sprinting on Saturday. Ew. Crazy. He had the Olympic training method. I'll talk to you all about it off break, off mic. Um, what that is to say is yep. all you have in preparation for the 49ers is two days of practice Facts. and a mental day on Friday. All you truly have as a starter is roughly 80 plays. Mm-hmm. Literally, y'all, you have 80 plays to prepare for a game. The starters will probably get 40 plays on Friday and full repetition plays and about 20 on Wednesday, 20 on Thursday. I'm not talking small seven on seven drills. I'm talking 11 on 11. Mm. That's really all you're going to get during yeah. the course of a practice. So with that being said, That's just not a ton of time to prepare for a team when you don't have a bank to draw from. Yeah, good point. Uh, I was talking, I forget who I was talking to coming to here. He's my homeboy. He was talking about test taking. And he was like, yo, I'm not prepared to take this test. He has to take a test to get his license therapy, his therapy license. He's like, I'm not prepared to take his test. I was like, you do realize you always test better typically the second time. Yeah, yeah. Because the first time you have a little, first time you just draw on blank. Second time, you have some residual knowledge to pull from for the second test. Mm -hmm. In the same manner, when you play a team like the Cowboys, you can pull from that residual bank of the Bucs because you're going to carry over 85% of the plays. When you play the Rams, you can pull from that residual bank of the Cowboys Mm. because defensively, you're going to carry over 80% of the plays. When you play the Niners, you don't really have as large a residual bank to pull from. It'd be like taking a new test. Yeah. You have no residual knowledge to pull from. You just got to study and hope for the best. That's truly why I think the Niners are in the best situation to put everybody on notice and take a game. And they're not alone in a good situation. Talk about the New Orleans Saints, if they could find a way into the playoffs. Look what they did to not only Tom Brady. Y'all remember week one, Aaron Rodgers? Everybody talking about, oh, no, it was his offseason and interviews. Nah, New Orleans now. (laughs) Brady, Rodgers, New Orleans defense and that pass rush, good luck to y'all. I give you this. The 49ers give me confidence because they run the ball, obviously, the physicality and the fact that they can play defense. They give me confidence because they just got 
the Midas touch in their quarterback and Jimmy G is just a winner, whatever you want to say about his individual skills. They're five and two on the road as well. We know this team is going to have to travel when they go into the playoffs. They're going to be able to handle that travel. Their team will be able to travel based on their attributes. But most importantly, <laughs> let me personalize it. Preparing for the physicality sounds easy up here in this air conditioned studio with this suit on, huh? Because I wouldn't have to go against Trent Williams. Good Lord. Let me oh, I got you. a story. I got a story after you. Okay, good. I, I, you know, I, I, got, I got a nickname for him. I ain't never met the man. Trent Wallums. <laughs> this dude, I have not seen one pass rush at that dude's dudes against Trent Williams. That has been effective. Give me a story because I, I would have retired on site. I would have pulled the Buffalo Bills dude if I saw that. Trent dude. Williams, he was playing for Washington. I was playing for the, uh, playing for the Eagles. How big, first first start. How big is he? How big is he? He got to be six. Five, maybe three thirty-five. Yeah, but like hamstrings just, up here. Yeah, hamstrings I mean, here. First start, and somehow I end up on my back. I don't think I. No, I know somehow. I swear, I swear. I'll find I the field. Who the tape? Well, how? I ain't get. I don't remember. I didn't get. Oh, <laughs> even worse. But somehow <laughs> I end up on my back, and here come Trent from a distance. Doing what? Ooh, about to just about to pile drive. What? On top of, I'm laying on my back, Move and awesome. here come Trent about to just put all three scars and my life. Just, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so you know what I do. I put my leg up. Yeah, you got to. I cleat put my em. leg up. I'm cleat like, em. you finna, you gonna get a cleat right to the gut. Seven. I'm just gonna dissect you like a sixth grade <laughs> science class project. Anyway, it didn't work. My leg was not strong enough. He broke Ooh, the trick. leg. Boom. All of a sudden, I got like a a, 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 a hand to my throat. I'm getting choked. I'm <laughs> oh, Trent, to me? To me who? I'm getting choked by Trent. <laughs> Here comes number 72, Cedric Thornton, my dog. Defensive tackle for us. He saw me out here. <laughs> He get Trent. Hey, get off him, big dog. Get somebody your own size. I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, coach. Yo, Trent a different type of beast, bro. Golly. He a different type of killer, bro. Oh, that's a killer. A different type of killer. Oh, that story was perfect, except you don't remember how you got on the ground, I but I you remember number 72, Cedric Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> You remember those who saved your life. He saved my life. I want to know how you put your life in harm's way. That's all I want to know. Coming up, it's time for our NFL Power Rankings. Damn, Trent. It's there to you. Find out if the Chiefs, Packers, and Cowboys made our list. Next, don't speak for yourself. So he choked you because you tried to... Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Trent Williams over here. (laughs) (laughs) We're 15 years behind us, so we're only three weeks left in the regular season. It's time for us to reveal our top five teams. Acho, get us started. Who are you going with, number five? Big dog. Big dog. How about the New England Patriots, Mike? Yes. Very, very interesting. Sell what you got. Oh, man, I'm representing. What a kill is that? Los Angeles Chargers right there. Now, why do I have the Chargers at number five? People I don't like, know. Oh, they shouldn't be that high. Oh, yes, they know. should. Because they won two of their last three games. And the third game, let's be real, they gave that one away. No one took it from them. They just left points on the scoreboard against the hottest team in the NFL. L.A. Chargers scoring 35 points a game in their last three games, including that loss that we gave away to the Chiefs. That is one of the top teams right now. Certainly hot. If we are being honest, I'm not convinced the Chargers are one of the five best teams in the AFC. It's time you and I have a very blunt and frank conversation. Mm. I would still take the Bengals mm. right now. I would take the Patriots we, you right know, now. We, you know I would we play take the, Bengals. the Chiefs right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm not you know convinced the, the Chargers yeah. are a top five team in the AFC. Patriots have dropped for me. I had them at four last week. I have them at five this week. Mm. We saw Patriots lost to the Colts. Colts are climbing. Y'all keep watching these lists. That's real. That's real. Oh, they're not going to climb higher than the Patriots on your damn list, are they? All right, I'll tell you who you got at number four then. Talk your talk. This is where it gets interesting already. We're going to fight. San Francisco 49ers. All right, come on. Sell. No, you're projecting they, too they, fast. They've won four out of their last five, okay. including wins over the Bengals, including a win over the, it was not the Cardinals, oh, the Rams. Mm. Embarrassed the Rams. They so the San Francisco 49ers sitting at eight and six. We know they're going to get to the playoffs. Uh. Sitting there comfortably in that first wild card spot. Mm. Maybe some things will shake. They might sneak mm. in a little bit higher mm. at the five seed, yeah. not just the six seed. Niners are a tough team to be reckoned with. Your guy, Jimmy G's playing good football. Yes. George Kittle playing good football. Yes, Debo yes. Samuel playing great football. Fourth? Niners at the fourth spot. Fourth? And they're third in their division, but they're fourth. <laughs> I hate playing this game with you because I'm a project. I'm like, who else could be the top three then? And I'm not living in the moment. Let me live in the moment. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs, the hottest team right now in the moment. Winners of seven straight. And they beat my Chargers. That's why they're high. I'm not a sore loser. I'm not going to penalize the Chiefs. They are hot right now. I don't think that they fixed themselves, even though 
They have been scoring of late. The last two games where we see the Chiefs score. Oh, over 34 points. Got to respect them. That Charger game, a little tough to swallow, a little still difficult to deal with. But the Chiefs are rolling. Got to give them respect. Chiefs have won seven straight, and you only have them. In the yeah, yeah, but I mean. Seven straight. Oh, but in let's, the NFL, we're not, not going to do this school. again. In the NFL. The Giants. Oh, what all the holding penalty we lose to the seven Giants. Straight, oh, we beat Green Bay. Oh, where Aaron Rodgers at? Like, we're not going to do that. All I'm saying is, I know they're higher on your list, too. But I want to attack this 49ers at number four. Uh, no, no, no. I want to hear your number three because I'm going to attack you in full totality. <laughs> Who's your number three? My number three, the Los Angeles Rams. I'm gauging teams based on where they are right now today. What, barely beat Seattle? I understand <laughs> the Rams beat the uh, beat the, the Rams lost to the Niners. Acho, make that make sense. Yeah. The Rams lost to the Niners the day Odell Beckham freaking showed up. Matthew Stafford trying to force the ball to Odell Beckham. Intercept. That's his fault. Next series, trying to force the ball again. Pick six. Fault again. I understand that where the Rams were then oh, is not on. where the Rams are oh, now. The Rams are the third best team in the National League. I got too shook over here. You're supposed to just say your pick. I say my pick. Then we discuss. But now you want to get it all out because you know that was a bad pick at number three. Okay, well then shoot Who your three? Oh. Who your three? Shoot me. Show them. Show them who my number three is because I hate your number three. Oh, second. <laughs> <laughs> the Rams. I don't know what to do with this team. I just put them in the middle of my power ranker and said, figure it out, damn it. What is the Rams? Like that first half yesterday, 3-3 with the Seattle Seahawks where things are on the line for the Los Angeles Rams. Then you get spanked by the Arizona Cardinals in your division, but at the same time, you also beat the team. But then you got to play the San Francisco 49ers again because the first time they molly whopped y'all. But I know they have all of the potential, especially the stars that could make some noise when it comes playoff time. Still a good team, formidable team, but a team I still have a little question mark about. All right, all right, we go to number two and number one. Let's just hurry oh, we up. Are the same? Huh? You want to see two and ones just off rip? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. To, to, yeah, yeah. It's always the corny ones. at the top. I hate the, like the twos and ones. Yeah, yeah. Like the twos. Hold on, wait a minute. No, it ain't. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. Somebody missing this. Green Bay and it's Tampa Bay. All right, all right. <laughs> Give me my number two. What the hell wrong with you? All right, Green Bay Packers. Not... Yeah, go to, go to, go to the one. Don't you do this. Go to one. You are going to put. All right, go ahead and put the you top ten. Yes, yes, it's still the Super Bowl champions. Yes, yes. Oh, you going to do a bad loss? How did y'all play? Yeah. How's your number one play against the Saints? Yeah, I'm crossing the line, cup. How's your number one play against yeah. the Saints? How did How's your number one, one play against the Saints? The same as y'all. Number one got. He looked better. Out. Did he look better than Who Aaron Rodgers? Uh, My number one had scored points three against points against the Saints. Against the Saints. <laughs> your number one had a big goose egg it against the Saints. It don't matter. Come on now, coach. He scored now, three points. He didn't score none. Let's also, the Bucks don't even have Mike Evans right now. They don't have Godwin right now. They don't have Fournette Look, right now. Better. They don't have yeah, Levante David right, right now. All they got is uh, uh, Antonio Brown right now. Yeah. If he got a proper vaccination card, <laughs> then he got a booster. He ain't got a booster shot. You gonna trust him? Fake Antonio ID, Brown? fake vac card. Come on. All right. I didn't know that you were gonna so leave who the do you, Bucks. Oh, you off. left the Niners off. Yeah. Well, well, that's actually okay. America, which list looks better? The one that left the Buccaneers, the Super Bowl champions off, who have a better record than they did last year when they won a the Super Bowl. Or the team that had the list that had the 49ers. But I have two questions. Why do you I have, have the 49ers? Here, here, here's what we got to decide. 49ers are better than Timber, man. Here's what we have They're to decide. They're third in their Here's what we have to They're decide. They're third in their division. Can the Bucks beat the Niners right now with all what the Bucks injuries? On Wednesday? How many damn COVID games That's we playing during the week? Right now, <laughs> can the Bucks beat yes. the Niners? Yes, 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 yes. And thank God we ain't got a plan right now to answer that fully. Sure, because you know the answer is no. No, okay. Acho, you got to admit, the omission of this team on your list, but the addition of the 49ers at number four that high up right now, what is this, like a, a no, momentum? This, this team has won four out of five. This, this team, team has won four out of five. They just lost the one game against the Saints. Got, and y'all number one lost against the Saints. This team one. got goose egged and right before their no win streak got smacked, smacked. Washington Saints. Smack, I lost the ball. Smack, <laughs> Thank you, guys. The other, way to answer my problem. The <laughs> other question no, I have for you, well, I know this team yeah. can beat this team because we literally have seen it. We've seen it. We've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we literally have seen Oh, you want to play that game? Okay. Chargers, who will we beat? Oh, you already talked about it. Yeah. You ain't yeah, beat, yeah, no, Chargers ain't yeah, beat nobody, nobody on my on list. Where the Chiefs game be real? Chargers ain't beat nobody on my list. We ain't played half the team. The either. Patriots have beaten the team on the only one team. I only have one issue with you. What's your issue, Big Dog? I don't understand why you think the 40, because they're healthier? They're healthier You trust Jimmy G, and I love me Jimmy G, over Tom Brady? Right here, right now, if you don't have my, Tom Brady got shut out. 
Shut out. Yeah, but you just no point. New Orleans did you know that to many many quarterbacks to score points, and oh. he got none. Oh god, that's terrible. God, you know what I don't like about our list? Not enough matchups like they played each other. <laughs> like, no, oh, we got the Rams or 49ers and then the Chargers. What else is pitch. intriguing, though, about you? Packers should be higher than the Bucks right today. Packers should be higher than the Bucks on your list. Packers I get it that they're one. the number one seed. They have the better record. But if you really want to get into it, I'm saying all things considered. One, they're not playing today. Let's say when they have to play and you assume that they're healthy. It's still disorder to me. You got to take the crown from Tom Brady. You can't just say he's going to give it to you. So the Bucks are going to be your one no matter what. Until they lose the play. Until I see it. Until I see it, yeah. Like, I don't, until you see it, I don't know why the Packers are your number one. One and four. Only team in the NFL level wins. Yeah. Only one. That's only one. Okay. So, no Arizona. Where's that? Gone. Arizona's, please. Okay, so so what's your number six, if we could? Cincy? Great question. Uh, My number six, I'd probably go Colts. Yeah. Number six, I'd go with the Colts. The (laughs) spiking hot, surging right now. Eight and six. They just beat. This team, and convincingly enough, yeah. Patriots tried to make it close in the fourth quarter. Yeah. They beat them convincingly enough. My seven, that's when I would consider the Cardinals, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But, nah, I, I, I don't I, love I, it. You use the logic of Chargers losing to the Patriots. Mm-hmm. But then the Patriots lost to the Colts, so why wouldn't they be on there? Unless your list doesn't they make They haven't sense. done enough. <laughs> For, me For me, it's this. For me, it's this. The make Patriots' sense. body of work, Chargers' body of work, essentially the same. Body of work. Body of work. We, we beat the Chiefs. Patriots' body of work, Chargers' body of work, same. Patriots have to head, have won. The Colts' body of work does not touch the Patriots' body of work. Okay, I'm going to leave on I'm this saying. with a little bias. I ain't going to lie. We, are, we did beat the Chiefs, you know, week three. We've also it? lost. And we also lost yes, to them sir. by spotting them all those points, and more importantly, that was a game we should have won. Admit that. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Okay. If if and buts were candies enough, please tweet us Merry and tell us which list is better. My yeah, list was no, better. I already know that's gonna be me. That'll yeah. do it for our week 15 power rankings. Yeah, and here, tune man. in next week to see who makes the list. God, Lord, I can't do. It. I can't spin because of my list. We see. <laughs> Damn that song. All right, coming up, fly Eagles fly right into the playoffs. Oh, they had a big win last night, but we'll tell you if Jalen Hurts is actually a high quality quarterback. Hello. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. That's still in front of you. High quality. Jalen Hurts led the Eagles to a much-needed win over Washington last night. Hurts finished with three total touchdowns and threw for just under 300 yards. But he also had two turnovers in the win. Eagles have now won four out of five games to stay in the playoff mix in the NFC. Bacho, Jalen Hurts a high quality quarterback? How Oof. good is Jalen Hurts? This one's tough, Sal. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Um, high quality is relative. And the problem that Jalen Hurts is falling into, and it's hard for me to answer the question. I know you're supposed to lead with the headline. Yeah. Is Jalen Hurts a high quality quarterback? Mm. Maybe. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. To be a high quality mm. quarterback, you got to be one sooner than later now. Yeah. Everybody's like, Acho, Jalen Hurts has only played 17 games. I get that. But Justin Herbert threw for 31 passes, touchdown passes last year. Went crazy. Mm. Joe Burrow, multiple 300-yard games, a 400-yard game last year. Went crazy. So everybody wants you to be great now. Why do I think Jalen Hurts is a high-quality quarterback? Because when I look at his comps, his market comps, he falls in line with them. His Mm. comps, Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, through their first 17 NFL starts, which is a current regular season, Jalen Hurts is has more touchdowns than Russ and Dak, but he has more interceptions than all of them. However, let's be real, y'all. Dak showed up and had three Hall of Famers on his offensive line, at least two. Dak showed up and had Des Bryant, had Jason Witten, had Cole Beasley. Russell Wilson showed up and had a legitimate legion of boom. Everybody in the secondary was beast, plus Marshawn Lynch was getting going. Uh, yeah. Lamar Jackson, he did not have what Dak Prescott had. He did not have what Russell Wilson has. So I will take nothing from Lamar. But Jalen Hurts, he had less than Dak and didn't have as much collective team plus coaching help as Russell Wilson. The fact that Jalen Hurts falls in line with Dak, Lamar, Russ through that first season of play, 17 NFL starts. Remember, he had four last year, y'all. That leads me to believe that he is a high-quality quarterback. Mm. But once again, we got to see sooner than later. Man, I'm with you in terms of that. Maybe, almost like the saying, if you think he's good, if you think he's not, you're right. right. (laughs) Jalen Hurts is not riding the fence in reality. He's riding the fence in perception. And I think, how good is Jalen Hurts? I think he's damn good, but I don't think that there's a loud chorus of people saying the same thing. Let's talk about that chorus, because most people look at Jalen Hurts and say, he's not prototypical. 
So since he's not prototypical, they're not pro Jalen Hurts. And I think that's where this is going to end up going. I've been on teams before. Let me start it off by how I got to the NFL. Second round draft choice, first day of mini camp. I kept noticing I had more leash than the other guys who were free agents, free agents or six rounders and seven rounds. I was like, damn, Wally, come up and do it again. You mean because I messed up last time? Yeah, yeah, do it again, <laughs> Wally. You're going to get this right. Oh, looking good. Meanwhile, six rounder does it right the first time. All right, I don't need to see it anymore. I had a different leash. I had a different thought. I had a different perception. They had a different return of investment they desired. Jalen Hurts was a second rounder insurance policy because Carson Wentz was spazzing. That doesn't mean we're in love with you. That means you're supposed to be an insurance policy. Now we actually got to live off of you as our insurance policy. Like I said before, I don't think they're in love with Jalen Hurts. I think they're in like with Jalen Hurts. And he checks all the boxes, especially the intangibles. But when it comes to lighting that flame, just, oh, the Tiffany Cambridge of the world. Yeah. Who's that? You, no, Tiffany Cambridge. You at least said Megan Good. Tiffany County, no. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I know Megan Good, but it, I mean, she ain't going to my high school like Tiffany Cambridge did. Yeah. I saw that flesh. Young. Oh, Tiffany Cambridge just flame. Can I get back to the point? Okay. To the point. Thank you. Doctor. All right. You can check the boxes, but God, sometimes they ain't got to check the boxes. They just want it. I don't think they really want it with Jalen Hurts. They don't at least perceive that. Cosign, and I'll reiterate my point, man. Wait, There's wait. no middle class in the National Football League oh. at quarterback. There is oh. absolutely no middle class in the National Football League at quarterback. Facts. Middle class quarterbacks get replaced or are getting replaced. I say this about Los Angeles. People ask me, Acho, you love living in Los Angeles? I say, you yes. have to live here if you're in the industry. Everybody either lives in LA or they're coming next week. Mm. That's how it goes down in L.A. Mm. Middle class quarterbacks, they either get replaced or they are getting replaced at the mm. end of the season. Mm. Jared Goff got replaced. Jimmy G trying to replace him. Matt Ryan, people were saying, well, they draft a quarterback at number four last year trying to replace him. Mm -hmm. Tua Tunga Bailoa trying to replace him. Middle class quarterbacks get replaced or are getting replaced. So Jalen Hurts, he cannot stay in the middle class very long. We know he's not an upper-class quarterback. That's fine. He's only started 17 games. Give him some time. Yeah. We know he's not a lower-class quarterback. Of course, he's only started 17 games. Mm -hmm. Give it some time. But you can't stay in the middle class very long. Baker mm -hmm. Mayfield, he's been in the middle class for four years now. Nah. And many people are trying to replace him. Mm -hmm. At this junction in time, you got to figure out and reveal yourself quickly. Mm -hmm. This isn't one of those surprise parties where you let the owner of the home linger and look at everything. No, as soon as you come in the door, it needs to be surprise. Here I am. I am an upper class quarterback. Mm. That's what it was with Herbert. Mm. That's what it was with Burrow. Mm. That's what it's been with Kyler. That's what it's been with Josh Allen after his first year. By Josh awesome. Allen's 17th start, not his 16th, by his 17th start. Game one of year two, the beginning of year two, we knew Josh Allen was an upper class quarterback. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, young quarterback are revealing themselves quickly. Jalen Hurts has to do the same. Can't stay middle class for long. Well, bringing up Josh Allen, he improved every single year. Jalen Hurts already shows the same improvement. Nine percentage points in completion percentage. Eight in passer rating. Improvement. More importantly, more, most rushing touchdowns of all quarterbacks in the league this year. His average rushing yards, passing yards a game in totality, higher than higher class quarterback Russell Wilson. Interesting. And he also has more Total touchdowns, then Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, Lamar Jackson, high-class quarterbacks. Josh Allen, more yards per attempt than him. You think he is? You think he's not? I think that's where they're going to put him in terms of perception. My vote is he is a franchise quarterback. Not going to look prototypical. It's going to look a little unconventional. It's going to run through the running game. However, I still see the results. I still see the improvement, and I still see that you got someone as a franchise quarterback. We'll talk about Tiffany Cambridge later. Coming up, the injuries are stacking up in Tampa. I'll tell you how far Tom Brady can carry the Bucks. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Oh. Let's head to Tampa, where the injury list keeps growing. Chris Godwin, linebacker Levante David are out for the season, and Leonard Fournette is likely to miss the rest of the regular season. The Bucks still have Tom Brady, and the defending champs have the second best odds to win the NFC in the Fox Best Sports book. Ah, right, Joe, how far can Tom Brady carry the Bucks? Playoff game. That's it. That's he it? One. He got one in him. Uh, obviously, Tom Brady has done a lot with a little over the course of his mm. career, so no knocking Tom Brady. But remember what I said, and I'm adamant about this. If the Bucks got to see the Niners round one, which as it stands now, I believe they are slated to do Ooh. three seed, six seed. Um, They're going to be in problems, big dog. He might oh, not even get one if you got to see the Niners round Ooh. one. But... If you dodge the Niners, if the Bucs can move up to that two seed, 
moved down to the four seed. Bucks got one in them. Tom Brady has one in them. But it's a lot to overcome. We shall mm. over. It's a lot to <laughs> overcome one day. Um, and mm. for Tom Brady to try to overcome the absence of Chris Godwin, the injury to Mike Evans, the injury to mm. uh, Leonard Fournette, injury to Levante David, it's just a lot to overcome in a jam-packed mm. NFC. This mm. is not the NFC of yesteryear. And by yesteryear, I mean last year. Okay. It's not the NFC of a young Kyler Murray who can't get above 500. Isn't the NFC of a Rams team led by Jared Goff? Mm. Isn't the NFC of a Cowboys team with an injured Dak Prescott? Mm. This is not the NFC mm, of okay. a, uh, a, a distra- not even a distracted Aaron Rodgers, if you will, but mm. maybe a full Aaron Rodgers. This mm. Aaron Rodgers does seem to be a little bit hungrier. This NFC okay. is coming with that heat, ready yeah. to make noise. Oh, it's not the old, huh? Trying to discount Tom Brady and all them old seven rings he got, including last year. It's not last year. Okay, right? Well, everywhere you go, there you are, damn it. So stop trying to change your outfit and act like you're a different person. No, 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 no. I don't give a damn what you think Tom Brady, if anybody can, carry his team all the way to the championship. Yes, he can carry this Bucks team to a championship. Do they lead the league in, uh, in terms of scoring? Yes, they do. Does Tom Brady lead the league in passing touchdowns? Yes. Is this a passing league? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But those are tangibles. Let's talk about Tom Brady and what's, what's really important in terms of him and his leadership. You're weighing the numbers. You're weighing the stats. You're weighing the particulars and saying it doesn't look the same. But that's all you could put on the scale. But what you're not putting on the scale is his intangibles. All the intangibles, those attributes, is what really makes Tom Brady Tom Brady. How he activates others. You know this in your world. There's some people you get around, like me, that just make you feel good, right? Just makes you pick up in terms of biorhythms. I just feel better. And the flip is true as well. There's some people out there that you soon you get around them, you just feel a little less like, oh, you got to guard yourself. Or here they come. Or, oh, they want something. Whatever it may be. Tom Brady activates others to be the best they can be. Whether it's next man up because of injuries or more importantly, it's just because Tom Brady's going to get the most out of you. If I saw Aaron Rodgers win a Super Bowl with 15 guys on IR, oh, trust me, old Captain America Tom Brady can do the same. Coming up, the Seahawks playoff hopes are over. And we'll tell you if the Russell Wilson era in Seattle is also over. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Seattle struggled on offense in last night's loss to the Rams with a season low 214 yards. Seahawks are are now 5-9 and and are guaranteed to have the first losing season in their 10 years with Russell Wilson. CBS Sports wrote, quote, the the Russell Wilson Pete Carroll era seems to be coming to an end. Huh, glad that read came to an end. So, Acho, is the Russell Wilson era officially over in Seattle? I would hope, man. You would, hope? Yeah, and hate up. It's been a rough week for me relationally, Sal. So. Um, just looking at, like, the, I have so much affinity for so many public relationships. Um, <laughs> Devon Franklin, right. Megan Good, right? For those that don't know, man, look them up. Wrote an incredible book to wait, and somehow after nine years of marriage, that relationship came to an end. It hurt me! <laughs> It hurt me. Uh, and just like that, watching this Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson relationship yep. come to a near end, it's, it's hurting my heart, man. I've Aww. seen a lot of good things. I guess 10 years is just that point of contention. Oh, oh, um, oh, 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 coincidence. Um, 10 years is that point of contention relationally where you may have some high highs together, win Super Bowls together, mm. write best selling books oh. together, mm-hmm. star in movies. Oh. Together, um, you could do some phenomenal things together, but that 10 year point appears to be the point of contention because Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll, now they've hit 10 mm. and for the first time having a losing season. Now, thankfully, hopefully, mm. they'll make it through the holidays, mm. right? You know, I mean, like, thankfully, well, they'll celebrate Christmas together. You shoot no shot. I'm saying, like, I'm glad. You shoot no shot. I'm glad <laughs> Russ and Pete will make it through the holidays. Okay. But after the holidays, oh, the end, they don't need to make the Valentine's Day. I'll tell you that much. They ain't going to make it. They, it to they don't at all need to make it to Valentine's Day. And these end, so what? this appears to be the straw that broke the camel's back. It's what? unfortunate. I did not want to see it. I never want to see relationships end. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. Shut Duck. up. Shut up. I never do. It's not, it's not an exciting thing. I'm just reading but this relationship. Mm. Uh, it needs, it needs, mm. and hopefully mm. Megan Good mm. and Devon Franklin. Can yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they need your figurative hugs and, and condolences. <laughs> They're going to be all right. <laughs> they ain't having any kids, so good. <laughs> I'm glad they don't have any of that. 
Oh, that was a phenomenal take. Except one thing. What happened? Which proves my point. Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll, man, kiss and make up. Come on, y'all. Like, Megan and Devon didn't get divorced off the first argument. This is their first losing season. This is the first time it got bad on them all of a sudden. Because <laughs> you know what? If that's the case, then buyers beware of Russell Wilson going forward. Because if Russell Wilson, I'm going to say it, if you ain't going to sit still and rebuild this, Wait a second, if you're just going to jump ship, nah. you're just going to say, we getting divorced Put off our first argument, we out. Put some more time on that yeah, clock. Yeah, you do that. Let me tell you why. And I heard you putting that bid in. I ain't mad. Russell Wilson started all this. Oh, you started this gangster. And it's the thanks I get, Russell. Let's talk about it. His passer rating has been going down every single year since 2018. See, people thought I was a hater. No, I tell the truth too early. I've been telling y'all about Russell Wilson. Oh, complain itself. I'm sitting there with Sierra and Roger Goodell, and I don't know what to do with the Super Bowl, but watching jealousy. No, enjoy the ride, and then you go back to the drawing board and make sure your team is better. But not Russell. So guess what? This is what I want him to do. I want him to commit. I want him to recommit. He has. I want him to send an IG out like Devon and Megan did just a couple months ago <laughs> and act, fake it till you make it, damn it. You know why? I saw Russell Wilson quit on his team last night. Yes, I said it, but you don't know what to look for. You know why? Because you're not in a committed relationship. No, quitting looks like starring in another TV show, getting it in with different dudes and claiming you an actress. That's what quitting looks like. Oh. Sticking it through. Oh. Sticking it through oh. looks like messing up your middle finger playing oh. a football game oh. on the helmet of Aaron Donald oh. and still coming back oh. four weeks later. That's what sticking it through looks like. That's what I'm talking about. Quitting, it, you talk about somebody else, not Russell Wilson. What, 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 Russell Wilson, okay, I'm going to give it to you like this. Two and five in his last seven games. You're talking about sticking it through. I don't need you to just be present. I need you to present who you are. Russell Wilson last night didn't present who he was. Let me give it to you like this, Acho. Did you know that Russell Wilson last night had zero rushing yards and zero rushing attempts? That's only happened one time in his career. Coincidentally, when he played against the Rams in 2018, he put in his bid in. He wanted to be Matthew Stafford before Matthew Stafford. Stafford was no, there. No. He over there trying to get saved. Russ has done enough. No, Russ has been the no, same person no, from before the relationship no. to after the relationship. Stop playing. It's Pete Carroll who has changed. It's what? not Russell Wilson's Pete fault. Pete Carroll? It's on Megan. Go- I mean, it's on Pete Carroll. <laughs> it's not on Russ. All I know is Russ tapped out. You don't run the ball one time when you're known as a play extender. Mobile. You got to be who you are to this. Thick and thin, you'll never hear these vows. From thick and thin, rich or poor, sickness and health, be Russell Wilson. I thought you were healthy. Something wrong with your finger? What's wrong with your legs? And stop taking them shots. I want to be safe. Coming up, LeBron is not panicking after another Lakers loss last night. Check your DM. We'll tell you if he's keeping it 100 or only keeping it 99. That's next on Speak for Yourself. On this show, we only know how to keep it 100 and take shots. <laughs> but others only keep it 99. Don't take shots. Each day, we're going to get to the bottom. Who's really telling the truth? Case in point, the Lakers are back to 500 after another loss to the Suns last night. But LeBron James does not seem to be worried just yet. Take a listen. You don't know. We have no idea what this team can be of. So how can we really fully assess what we have? You know, when we haven't been whole. We haven't... I can't remember the last time, you know, we... You know, played the same starting lineup. I had the same rotation coming off the bench. It's been a long time. So, um, it's hard to assess that. Man, he needed another mic. The other hand was talking more than him, and it was saying some. I'll tell you, is King James keeping it 100 or 99? He's keeping it 100, Cell. But if you lie to yourself enough, eventually, Mm. you're going to believe it's the truth. Oh, okay. And LeBron James has lied to himself so much about this Lakers (laughs) squad that he actually is telling (laughs) his truth. He's telling his truth? Yeah, but it doesn't map on to the truth, which is reality, which is he's keeping it 99 right now. The universe whispers before it yells. It's whispering to LeBron, get out, get rid of this team. Better listen to it before it starts yelling. That's it for us. You see his off hand was moving like that? We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bottom line. Though. 